Welcome to Wednesday Morning Bible Study. Uh, today we are going to, uh, to discuss James chapter 4, verses 1 to 10, and uh, I'm going to read the New International Version, NIV. Enlarge it a little bit. What causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? You desire but do not have, so you kill. You covet, but you cannot get what you want, so you quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. When you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives, that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. You adulterous people, don't you know that friendship with the world means enmity against God? Therefore, anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. Or do you think scripture says without reason that he jealously longs for the spirit he has caused to dwell in us, but he gives us more grace? That is why scripture says God opposes the proud, but shows favor to the humble. Submit yourselves then to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Come near to God, and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Grieve, mourn, and wail. Change your laughter to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will lift you up. Amen. 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 And as always, let's begin by just focusing on what words stand out as we go through, uh, through this passage. There's a lot, a lot in there. What words stand out? Humble Resist. yourselves. Humble mm -hmm. yourselves. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Right. Your desires that battle within you. What other words? You adulterous people. Who ask with wrong motives. Mm -hmm. Wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts. Anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. Yes, yes. God opposes the proud, but shows favor to the humble. Amen. Submit yourselves. But it gives us more grace. Mm -hmm. Amen. When you ask, you do not receive because you ask with the wrong motives. Yes. Very powerful. Yes. Very powerful. What else? You double-minded. Mm. Yes, yes. God opposes the proud, but shows favor to the humble. Amen. Amen. Good morning, Tracy. Morning. Would somebody would like to read it again? What causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desire that battles within you? Your desires, your desires, but... Well, you desire, but do not have, so you kill. You you covet, wait a minute, what you, do? you covet, but you cannot get what you want, so you call and fight. You do not have because you do not ask. When you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives. That, that you may spend what you get on your pleasure. You adulterous people, uh, don't you know that friendship with, with don't you know what friendship with the world means enemy against God? Therefore, anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world because becomes an enemy of God. Or do you think of uh, scripture says without reason that he jealousy longs for the spirit he has caused to dwell in us? But <clears throat> excuse me, but he gives us more grace. That is why scripture says God opposed the proud but shows favor to the humble. Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Come near to God and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your heart, you double-minded. Grieve, mourn, and wail. Change your laughter to mourning and your joys to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord and he will lift you up. Amen, amen. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. <clears throat> So what what does this say if we start from the from the top from the top, you know, this whole idea of fights and quarrels? Where does this all come from? The 
It's very, 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 very powerful ad, you know, warning. Since it comes from internal strife, the yes. battle within you. Yes, the battle within uh, all of us. And we, and we all have that. And and we have to, I think sometimes we don't recognize it. We don't recognize that we're we're fighting, you know, even even those of us that, that don't do something wrong, we still fight it inside and, and some of us can push it down, others cannot. We, we all we all covet and don't get everything that we want, but not every one of us quarrels and fights. Right? And relying on God will help us help us keep down this this urge to to, to quarrel and fight. What else? What else are we saying? What, what, what gets me is, is number three. When you ask, you do not receive because you ask with the wrong motives. Mm -hmm. Then you may spend what you get. You know, dear God, give me that new car. And when you don't get the, you know, you don't get that car, you know, it's the wrong motives. What else? What else? But I, th I think that that reflecting on the wrong motives. I mean, every time we pray and we ask God for something, um, now here most of us are asking God for something for others, which are the right motives. But we have to kind of check to see: do we have the wrong motives for that? Mm -hmm. You know, God, give me this job. Well, why do you want the job? Are you gonna Are you gonna serve God with this new job? You know, that's that's you know how we want to want to begin thinking about. Uh, when we ask, how do we, you know, are we asking for things that'll help us serve God even better? Or well, we ask God if he's going to benefit a lot of people, you right. know, a lot of people or one person or yourself only. Right, right. Then, then this idea of you adulterous people, it doesn't mean you are you know, you're, you're having affairs, adulterous in the sexual sense, but ad adulterous in that, that you're cheating on God. You're living the world. You're, 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 you're having the pleasures of the world that, that hurt other people, but make you feel good in the short term. And so that's an interesting use of the term adultery. And so if you think about that, let's think about that, that we're cheating on God. We're hanging out and drinking and doing drugs and, you know, and, and you know, hanging out with, with prostitutes and all that stuff. And, and they're having a great time. You know, we're, we're cheating on God. Mm -hmm. I guess that's when you talk about the friends of the world becomes the enemy of God. Right. The, because we're friends of the of, of the worldly things, the, the things that God are not, like you said, the drinking and whatever we do, but we become friends of the world and enemies of God because we leave, we don't think about them. We just leave them behind. Yeah, the uh, and and it doesn't mean you don't enjoy life on Earth. It doesn't that's not that you know some people will say you know don't don't do anything fun, you know that's what the the old the old punishment gospel, but. But, you, you know, there's a fine line like everything else. There's nothing wrong with having a beer. There's something wrong with having 40 beers. <laughs> 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 so, so I guess that goes back to five. What do you think scripture says without reason that he that, that he jealousy longs for the spirit? Like, yeah, that is why we ask if Jesus will do this. You know, if I'm going to do this, this is what Jesus would do mm -hmm. before do it. <laughs> well, Jesus drink 40 beer. Right, right. Exactly. Exactly. But if you did and you repent, he gives us more grace. He still he gives, gives us more grace. grace. Exactly. He still gives us grace. Exactly. The, uh, but, but you have to repent with your heart. You yeah. have to repent with, in truth. You can't just mm -hmm. repent to say, oh, well, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to do something bad tomorrow because I know God's going to forgive me. So I'm going to do it, you know. But you have to truly repent and really feel the the error of your ways. Mm -hmm. 
So, I mean, it's, it's, and, and as I said, I, you know, often in sermons about this idea of the punishment gospel and the prosperity gospel. And so people misuse this, this kind of stuff to say, you know, you're going to hell if you, if you do anything in the world, you're going to hell. And so join my church because, you know, if you don't, you're going to, or, you know, the prosperity gospel that, you know, if, if you don't do this, you're better than other people. You're better than other people. But what this is all about is that we're all imperfect human beings. You know, we're all going to be judged by God and it's our relationship with God. And so we need to reflect on these things every day to say, am I praying with the right motives? Mm -hmm. You know, and it's just, just to check ourselves. I think we do most of the time pray with the right motives. I mean, we pray this morning for other people. We're not praying for ourselves to win the lottery. Mm -hmm. But we often don't think about, don't think about that. Or model that for other people. So again, we move down to the, you know, God opposes the proud, but shows favor to the humble. Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. That humility is so powerful. Yeah, humble yourselves before God. Yep. Yeah. The, I mean, one of, one of the reasons I like the fruit of the spirit is, is the, the fruit of meekness, you know, the, is the most powerful thing in the world. Being meek is, is powerful, and people don't think of that. In this world, we, 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 we say, oh, if you're meek, you're weak. You know, you got to show everybody how strong you are. But humility is, is powerful. People are drawn to the humble. Yeah. And we all have our, our moments. Every one of us has the moments of kind of feeling our oats, you know, feeling that maybe we're a little better than other people. We have that. We have to kind of resist that. Come near to God and he will come near to you. That idea that, uh, that as we do this stuff, as we humble ourselves, as we reflect on our motives for praying, you know, we're coming near to God and God is, is, is not only coming near to us, God is within us. And as I'm, you come, oh, go ahead. sorry. Go ahead, Minister Rossi, go ahead, yeah. I was gonna say, as you come nearer and nearer to God, you will feel his presence more and more. Mm -hmm. as, as we humble ourselves and come near to God, he will make his presence known. He will, he, we'll be able to feel him more and more. Amen. Amen. He's always near to us, but sometimes mm -hmm. when we're not doing what we're supposed to do, we, we say that God is, you know, God is not with us. God is far from us. Mm -hmm. But when we submit ourselves to him, yes, then, then we will be able to feel his presence. Mm -hmm. You might've heard this old quote, if God seems far away, who moved? You know? <laughs> That's a good one. I hadn't heard that that one. I like that. Yeah, like, <laughs> a very good one. <laughs> like Minister said, God is always near to us. It's, right. You're the one that keeps, you know, pulling the covers and rolling away, you know? So. <laughs> <laughs> what else? What else do we see? And when you get closer to God, you find that you don't want as much because mm -hmm. you pretty much have all you need. So. Well said. Amen. Well said. Yep. The, the song says, turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his glorious face, and the things of this earth will grow strangely dim. Mm. So just like she said, when, when you look at him, when you're close to him, the things of earth don't matter as much as they used to. Mm. And you, you don't need as much to, to, to be okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like they say, when you change the way you look at something, the thing you're looking at changes. Yes. Yes. We got some great phrases today. <laughs> I, I'm loving it. The great phrases today. The, uh, yeah. It's, and, and, you, and you really think about it. The more you want, the further away from God you are. Mm -hmm. Right. That's the more you're, you're coveting, the further away you are. That's, that's interesting. And then, then that's finally, another good one. Yeah. yeah. Humble yeah. yourself before the Lord and he'll lift you up. You yeah. And I think you should have, you should have a reason to have a lot of something. Yeah have a reason you know yeah. to have you know mm -hmm. something like yeah. oh 
you know, we get a whole lot of stuff. We say, okay, why do I have to have all of them? Why? Exactly. Yep. Yep. The, uh, would somebody want to read it one final time? I'll do it. Yep. What causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within? You desire, but do not have, so you kill. You covet, but you cannot get what you want, so you quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. When you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives, that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. You adulterous people, don't you know that friendship with the world means enmity against God? Therefore, anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. Or do you think scripture says without reason that he jealously longs for the spirit he has caused to dwell in us? But he gives us more grace. That is why the scripture said, God opposes the proud, but shows favor to the humble. Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Come near to God and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts. You double-minded, grieve, mourn, wail. Change your laughter to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord and he will lift you up. Amen, amen. Thank you. So what do we walk away with from, uh, well, sounds, from this? Well, it sounds like the top part sounds like spoil, spoiled little children. Right, exactly. You know, you, you can't get what you want, so you quarrel and fight. Yep. You know, you, you you bully other people because of the battle within you. Yes, yes. It sounds like we're being a little bit of a brat, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. And that's that's what humanity is, has become. God did to get one of those spiritual switches. and <laughs> <laughs> Exactly, exactly. And, and have us pick it out. <laughs> yeah, oh, man, you remember that? Too? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Have us pick out the switch. <laughs> Making it even more, more, uh -oh. more painful. Oh, man. <laughs> you guys are dating yourselves. Exactly. We, we, all, 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 all morning, we've been dating ourselves. So. <laughs> we've been around a while. That's a blessing. That's a blessing. It is. The, yes, uh, truly it is. is. The, uh, what, what else? Obviously, humility is all over this, that this idea of, of humbling ourselves. Minister Charles, can you say something? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, well, God will always supply our needs when we ask for them. However, we have to ask with the right motives. Mm -hmm. So uh, that is that is one of the main takeaways. And while we're doing that, we have we can't be conformed to the world. Mm -hmm. We have to be we have to trans we have to be transformed. Like Pastor says, we we don't. Um, it doesn't mean we can't have fun, mm -hmm. but we have to we have. To, you know, we have, there has to be a distinction between us and the world. Mm -hmm. There has yeah. to be. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. And I think that when we ask now, we, he wants us to wait, you know, and to realize that when I give it to you, this is what I would like you to use it for. Maybe you don't know what you're going to use it for. He wants you to learn how to use it and, you know, keep on using it for, for better and for a long time. Not just so we have to wait. He mm -hmm. sometimes you wait, even if it's mm -hmm. 10 years, you have to wait. Yes. There's a reason you have to wait. So we should just not drop it and say, okay, that's it. I'm not gonna pray again about it and all that, you know, and all that. We have to stay in prayer, you know, whatever mm -hmm. it is that we're looking for, if it's gonna take 15 years, he's telling you, stay with me, stay in it, stay in your mm -hmm. prayer. Don't mm -hmm. see. Praying. You know, you have to stay. Yeah, you are standing on a solid ground with him. Stay in it. Yes. The uh, um, and and one of the things before we go, I mean, I we we have to talk about social media. I'm looking at this thing, thinking about social media. Don't you know that friendship with the world means enmity against God? And so th think about this: that everyone's focused on the number of likes they have, on on how good they look, on how good the food they eat is. <laughs> On, on everybody's <laughs> approval and and every time think about it that's all all this worldly stuff is driving people crazy it's, it's exactly it's making people mentally mm -hmm. ill mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. of this need for approval worldly that's right. approval mm -hmm. and that's why so many people have turned away from the church and so that's mm -hmm. that's this really speaks i mean you know written thousands of years ago is talking to today this exact moment in time 
you know, and so, so just think about what social media is doing and, and uh, um, it really is pretty incredible. It's very exhausting. Yes. 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 Oh, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's very mentally exhausting and, and uh, um, well, good, good, good. What, what else before we uh, take some, uh, some prayers? This humility is is all all through it, and and mm -hmm. you know it doesn't say arrogance, but it says the first part. It's all this, you know, it's come. You know, this battle within you is this battle for arrogance, mm -hmm. this battle, this need to feel better than other people in a worldly way, instead of humbling yourself before God and 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 enjoying this this happiness that defies human understanding. So so great. All right. Well, let's. Uh, I'll stop the recording and we'll take some prayers.